to History Inside a Nutshell, the show where we sail into our port of call discussing maritime history. In today's video, we're going to be doing a reaction video and this is something that I thought I would never do, but I have been inspired to do something like this after watching one video. So I just thought, okay, let's just give this a try, see what happens and see how we go. I have done a history reaction on my main YouTube channel before and surprisingly it got the most reviews on my YouTube channel, which was much to my surprise. <laughs> but this is completely different from maritime history. Not too long ago, I have watched a reaction video on a YouTube channel called Historic Travels. And for those who don't know, Historic Travels is run by Sam. And usually he does videos on maritime ships like I do in some of the videos. And funny enough, Sam actually inspired me to do the YouTube channel. So big, massive shout out to you, Sam. And he did this video reacting to a Titanic video on a YouTube channel called The Bright Side. And by my facial expressions, you can see that The Bright Side is not favourable with maritime historians or any kind of historians for what matter. <laughs> you could tell by their videos when you watched, it's all rushed, it's... And for the purpose of this, it's just all about the money and the views. And this is something I will not stand for because I refuse to actually have something like this because this is why a lot of people just get inaccurate historical information. And there will be historians, including myself, that will, will not be standing for this. I'm strict about that and so are many of the others too. But when I was watching Sam's video, I thought that there was another channel that has done the same thing. And I wouldn't say it's bad as the bright side, but it's still inaccurate when it comes to history. And the YouTube channel that I'm referring to is called The Infographics Show. And it's a YouTube channel that has been running around the same time as the bright side, but Unlike The Bright Side, the infographic show focuses on different periods of history. So not only they do videos on ships, but they also do videos on monarchs, on important events like World War II and the Spanish Armada. And let's just say some of their information, including the dates, it doesn't sound right. I wouldn't say it's worse than The Bright Side, but it's not that great either. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reacting to one of their videos, one of the Titanic videos to be precise, and I'm just going to give my own reviews and feedback. Now bear in mind I will get some parts wrong in this video when it comes to historic research because even though I consider myself as a historian I'm not really as confident um, with some of the events. However there are bits that I do know and feel confident about but I really want to take this away once I've done this video because I just really want to learn that's all I ever want to do just learn because that ladies and gentlemen is very important <laughs> but yeah anyway let's get on with the video because I have a feeling that with one of them I have a feeling we are going to be talking about some bits that are right, some bits that are wrong, but I really, really, really don't know. But I'm going to see which video is relevant. And on the infographic show, I have watched a few of their Titanic videos, including the one about Captain Smith. And I think it's a little bit inaccurate, but mostly just because of the new information that was taken from the book called On a Sea of Glass. But yeah, but it's something that I really want to focus on another time. I just really want to focus on one thing that, that, that just, you know, just uh, uh, the things that I didn't really know about that I want to comment on. But yeah, anyway, let's get around to it. So the latest video that the infographics have done about the Titanic is called The Sinking of the Titanic Hour by Hour. Um, I don't really know if I should be doing something like that, but 
how, how about I don't know but we've got uh, 15 insane facts about the Titanic or I am the captain of the Titanic which again I will probably do a separate video on Captain Smith at some point because I have watched it already but it's just all of that and oh this is the thing that I was really surprised about. Did the military sink the Titanic? Crazy conspiracy Titanic theory, ugh. And then they talked about the bodies, the ghosts. I think that's roughly it. So I think we should go with the conspiracy theory because I have a feeling this is gonna be a lot of debunking. So yeah, let, let's go with, uh, did the military sink the Titanic? So. Here we go. You all know the story. It's about 11.40 p.m. on April 14, 1912, and Britain's largest passenger liner, the RMS Titanic, finds itself in a bit of trouble. First, there's a bang, followed by an eerie period of silence, and before you can say, Blimey, you just hit that old... Okay, I'm gonna probably stop this there for a second, because even though Titanic was a British ship and it was built in Britain, it... It was a bit of a collaboration between Britain and America, usually because that the Titanic, or one of the Titanic's um, uh, members of staff uh, that worked um, with the White Star Line, the White Star Line was part of a company called the International Marine uh, Maritime Company. I think that's how you pronounce it right, but I think it was a bit of a mouthful, but it's formally known as I M M. So basically how it happened was that when the White Star Line was in the middle of a recession crisis in 1902, the company actually bought the White Star Line and considering that its owner, JP Morgan, was an American, it actually collaborated with um, a few of the Titanic's ships and J. Bruce Ismay actually became the chairman of the company um, before the Olympic class liners were built including Titanic so I wouldn't say it's just British because even though it was built in Belfast and some people will debate if it's like just a British ship or an Irish ship or just an American ship it's a bit confusing so I would say even though it's built in Britain I don't think it's 100% British and I'll just probably leave it at that like that. You just hit that old sport the unsinkable ship starts taking on water. Just over two hours later, the titan of the high seas goes under, and just over 1,500 people acquaint themselves with Davy Jones's locker. It's a bad day in- Okay, this is where I have another problem, because you, as you can see on the screen, yeah, it says that the Titanic sank in one piece at 1.40 p.m. That is wrong. Uh-uh. Sorry, that's wrong. Now, I know that with the animation, I don't know how you actually s managed to split the Titanic into two uh, on this, because it could be the animation, and some of the animators don't know, because, let's face it, the animation is not great. But the time, no! It sank at 2.20 a.m., not 1.40 a.m. And it took two and a half hours to sink, not two hours. So, they just got it wrong. Ugh, that is one, one bad thing. Titan of the High Seas goes under, and just over 1,500 people acquaint themselves with Davy Jones's locker. It's a bad day indeed for all involved. But a century and a bit later, we could all laugh about it. That's just lazy writing. I'm sorry, but that's just lazy writing. Or can we? Because what if everything you thought you knew about the sinking of the Titanic was wrong? What if there was no catastrophic iceberg impact? What if someone wanted that ship to go down? What if Jack and Rose didn't even exist? Just kidding. But really, there are a lot of things you don't know about the Titanic. The word on some dimly lit streets is that the ship's destruction involved power, greed, and ultra-rich families. Was there a religious curse on the ship, or did it even sink at all? Do you think that's crazy? Trust us, there are believers, they are out there, spreading the word on internet forums. Today, we'll do a deep dive into their theories. Let's start with the possibility of a giant piece of floating ice not wrecking the ship, but the military doing it. Okay, so you all know World War I started in 1914, and you know the Titanic went down in 1912. But did you know that at this point in time, Britain saw Germany as its biggest threat to dominance in Europe? 
Did you know the German Emperor Kaiser Wilhelm II wanted nothing more than to build- Okay, this bit is true because Kaiser Wilhelm II, he was very determined and he had lots of ambitions to create the biggest and fastest liners and considering that he was a grandson of Queen Victoria, the British monarch Queen Victoria, he actually saw some of the British ships and he thought Ah, if Britain can build the biggest and faster ships, why cannot Germany? So they have got this right, actually, which I'm pretty pleased about. Build a bigger, better naval fleet than Britain, a country that proudly claimed to rule the waves. When the Titanic went down, Germany already had very powerful U-boats, one that could sink a huge passenger liner. Around three years after the Titanic sank, a U-boat destroyed a British passenger liner off the coast of Ireland, a sinking that killed 1,198 people. Okay, so they got the information right, but they didn't mention which ship it was, and that ship was the Lusitania. And I, I'm just so disappointed it wasn't mentioned, but that was a really, really good thing to put it there. Would it be too much of a stretch of the imagination to ask if a U-boat sunk the Titanic? Was Germany flexing its muscles? Was it gearing up for war? This theory might sound far-fetched, but trust us, some people give it a lot of credence. It's arguably more believable than some of the far-out theories you'll hear later. After the accident, both passengers and crew were grilled by the US Senate. Some of them said they had never heard an impact at all, but they did hear what sounded like explosions under the water. And get this, passengers in lifeboats said they saw a rescue ship approaching. Okay, again, this is really true, because there have been some eyewitness accounts that they have heard some rumbling before the ship broke in half. So. That is accurate, and there have been some eyewitness testimonies, which you can read online, uh, that have claimed that this was the case. And no one actually really knows how the Titanic split in half, but they have known where, but not what happened. And again, this is something that may remain a mystery or not, but this is something that I really want to dive into at a later date. But yeah, so they have got that right with the eyewitness testimony accounts, especially in the US inquiry. And I, I I definitely think that they're on the right track with the rescue ship. Now, again, the rescue ship is debatable because some people have claimed that the rescue ship was the Californian, but unfortunately, the Californian wasn't an American ship. It was British. So I think they got the nationality of the ship run, if, if only if it was the Californian. Some people think it was, some people think it wasn't, it's still debatable. But I won't go into too much about the Californian because that's another story for another day. But I will leave video links to some of the videos that people have done on the Californian and I would, especially one that I have watched already, so I will leave the link in the card and in the description box down below. But um, I don't think it will just be the Californian, but I think I might include a few others too, but yeah. Boats said they saw a rescue ship approaching, a ship they thought was crewed by Americans coming to rescue them, but Ugh, the American God. ship was nowhere near. So you have to ask yourself, what was that ship they saw? A few sailors on the sinking Titanic also said they saw a ship in the distance, and now some people think that that could have been a U-boat surfacing for a short while to admire the damage it had caused. Okay, so let's move on to a theory that the Titanic didn't even sink at all. And this isn't even the strangest theory. The British had built another massive ship called the RMS Olympic. This beast was the older sister of the Titanic, and both ships looked very much alike. In fact, they were almost identical. They were owned by an outfit called the Internet. Yes, now... What they have mentioned is true because there are a lot of conspiracy theories out there, especially on Reddit, that talk about the conspiracy theory. And I have come across a few videos on YouTube that some people do believe and have documented about. But this, this is the theory that I really don't believe because 
even though some people will say that the two ships look identical, Titanic was a tiny bit bigger than the Olympic because the Olympic had some parts that were smaller and the Titanic had some parts that were bigger. But if the Titanic did survive the sinking, some of the parts would have been extended or removed because and this was based on the popularity from the passengers and it was reviewed by Thomas Andrews who was on the ship during the maiden voyage and he made notes about the changes and all of that because he wasn't just a passenger he was also working because that was one of the parts of his jobs as a naval architect but I, I'm still shocked that loads of people actually believe the conspiracy theory really and it's just a bit hogwash. No mercantile marine group and that was controlled by none other than JP Morgan, yeah. the wolf of Wall Street in those days. In case you're wondering, the mm -hmm. Titanic was registered as a British passenger liner but it was actually owned by the American Morgan as was the Olympic. In 1911, the Olympic collided with a Royal Navy ship yeah. and the accident caused severe damage. The theory goes that because the Olympic was blamed for the collision, yep. its insurers, Lloyds of London, wouldn't pay up. That cost the International Mercantile Marine Group a lot of cash. To make matters worse, the other big ship, the Titanic, wasn't yet finished and the work on it had been delayed. This meant no ocean liners in the water and a big loss of money. Yeah, so this is true and it did cost a lot of money, but I think White Star had to pay a lot of damages following the accident. So the Olympic collided with the naval cruiser, the HMS Hawk, and it wasn't mentioned in the video, which I was really disappointed about, but whether it was due to time commitment or anything like that, or if they didn't research that, I don't really know. But it, it did sound like it was right, but White Star was responsible for the accident and there was a court ruling that proved that was the case. So I definitely think they got it right in that sense, but whether the, the International Mercantile Marine Company was the one responsible, again, because they own the White Star line, I just don't really know if it was right, but I but a lot of people have mentioned that White Star were responsible for that, so I'm I'm just a little bit in hot water with this one, but actually hot water is the wrong word. I I'm I'm just I'm just confused and debated. So what to do in that situation? Some people believe that the Olympic was patched up, not perfectly, but at least it could sail. After that, it was kind of a switch. They said that the damaged Olympic was the new Titanic. The theory sounds more believable when you hear that the crew on the Titanic said the ship listed to port in the water. That means tilted to the left, which is what would have likely happened if the damaged Olympic was in the water. Ok, so why would they do that? Well, to have at least one ship in the water for one thing. But there's more, and this is where it all gets insidious. You see, if a damaged ship sailed along icebergs over a long distance, there was every chance it would sink and it would look like an accident too, so the insurers would have to pay that. If it happened, JP and his company- Okay, again, I have heard of the things that happened with the conspiracy theory on this, and it was mentioned that if the conspiracy theory was true, then a hit in the iceberg would have been more deliberate, but again, it, it, it was mentioned, but it, even though it's not true, it has been mentioned as evidence in the theory. So I think they were true with the facts about the conspiracy theory, but obviously since the Titanic sank in real life and not the Olympic claiming to be the Titanic, I, I just generally think that if they did sink it on purpose, if it was true, I, I don't really think that conspiracy theory was not quite right. And you can't really sink a ship on purpose, really, because I don't know how, and this is really confusing. I still need to find out why this is confusing, but I think you don't really sink a ship on purpose when it comes to near an iceberg and icebergs can be really dangerous and it can destroy some parts of the ship just like what it did in the Titanic and 
there are some really like bit cases that some of the framework and the rivets on the Titanic were weak which actually made um, the iceberg to scrape um, the bulkheads on the bow and it, that's why it flooded up to five watertight compartments or was it six? But it's around, no, actually it's six, beg your pardon, it's six watertight compartments. And, and even though the steel system was weaker at the time, but again, um, it's to do with the double keel. And even though it was, uh, I don't really know how to describe this because it's really hard to explain because at the time, the Titanic and the Olympic did have a, a double layer skin for the keel and um, and it was safer than having a single skin layer uh, for the double hull but again I really need to look into this because I'm not really confident with explaining about this but I probably need to explain it in another video at some point. JP and his company of wolves on Wall Street would get their cash for the banged up vessel and they could put the real Titanic in the water. Everyone's a winner. Oh, except the 1,500 plus dead people. Some theorists believe that they didn't actually want people to die because the damage was so small, JP and friends thought everyone would be rescued when it went down. This all sounds like a Dr. Evil kind of plan, and there are more than enough people that want to really believe that all those bankers are forged deep in the pits of hell. But there is one reason, and one reason alone, why the tale doesn't ring true. You see, the construction number of the Titanic was 401, and the construction number of its sister was 400. When bits of the Titanic were pulled from the ocean bed, they had the 401 construction number on them. When the Olympic was turned into scrap, nowhere was the number 401 found. JP Morgan isn't off the hook yet. Another theory is that he wanted some people on the ship dead. Sinking the Titanic to slay some enemies might seem- Okay, this is really interesting. <sighs> I don't really know if they actually put the 401 and this is something I've never come across before but that this is really interesting because when I looked at photographs I wasn't really too sure if I've seen like the numbers 401 on the hole somewhere this might not be true and because even though the Olympic was numbered as 400 and the Titanic was given the number 401 I'm not really too sure if it was true because there was no way, there was no photographic or film evidence to show that number on the bow. Some enemies might seem a bit excessive, but you have to remember that some people think the earth is flat and Queen Elizabeth is a lizard inside human skin. <laughs> Why? Why did they include that? <sighs> okay. This is some lazy writing here. I'm sorry, but that's that's just lazy. That's just really, really lazy. I'm sorry, but why would you do that? Conspiracy theorists say JP wanted very much to establish the Federal Reserve Bank in the US, but in his way stood a handful of people that didn't think it was such a good idea. Three of them were the wealthy and powerful people named John Jacob Astor, Benjamin Guggenheim, and Isidore Strauss. Guess what? They all went down with the Titanic and JP got his bank. The theory asserts JP was supposed to have a seat on the ship, but he canceled the trip at the very last minute. Oh, what good fortune. Yes, this is true. All the three men that were mentioned did not survive the Titanic disaster. And JP Morgan was supposed to go on the ship, but apparently he canceled at the last minute due to illness. And JP Morgan did die a year later but I'm not really too sure about like the idea and the men agreeing or disagreeing to anything that JP Morgan did like the idea of. But I really don't know. I just really, really don't know. It, it still puzzles me. It really does puzzle me. But again, I may, might need to look into that. You read that on Reddit and now you know bankers equal evil, JP Morgan equals murderous villain. But wait for a moment before you go on the dark web and buy yourself a Kalashnikov to take on the world's bankers. A little bit more research tells you that his cancellation was due to the fact that he was having some problems getting his art collection from Europe. Yeah, this is true because a lot of people have said uh, that they believe like things, that they have said they do believe things like this on Reddit, but that's just a common stereotype. 
over to the States. There's also evidence that when JP cancelled his alleged mortal enemy Guggenheim hadn't even bought his ticket. As for those three guys being against the establishment of the Fed, there aren't any news clippings from back then that had them going on record saying they were. In fact, Strauss discussed the Fed in the New York Times and said he was for it, not against it. No good conspiracy theory could float without the Rothschilds being mentioned, so we should add that some people believe it was that family that was behind the murder of the wealthy triad. Okay, I've never heard of this before. Okay, that is really confusing. I, I don't know what the, five, the, the right words to say to that one, but it is true, the Rothschild family was really, really wealthy, and one of the estates they have is not too very far away from where I am and they are like a powerful family but I don't know too much about them really but I know that few members of the family were bankers but I'm not really too sure what their connection to the Titanic or the International Maritime Marine Company are so yeah, I, I don't really know this. Again, I need to research on that, but it's just something that I don't buy. But again, it, it's just research and I really need to look into this. Who did? We're guessing the first thing that comes to your mind is an ancient Egyptian mummy. Those damn mummies still sticking their noses in everything. This is how the tale goes. One of the people that died on the Titanic was a guy named William Steed. He was a newspaper editor and spiritualist who held some pretty far- Okay. So this is true that it was mentioned, but I want to give you like a little bit of detail before it carries on. So basically, um, William uh, T. Stead, and I think I got his name wrong, but it, it was mentioned right in the video, but I know I got his name wrong. He was a journalist um, that was very popular during the Victorian era, and he has made some reports on like real life events, including poverty in the East End of London. And um, he was quite a revolutionary journalist for his time. And he was due to go to America for a conference, but this is what from I understand. And he did actually tell stories to members or his friends in the first class about a theory because he was a spiritualist so he did believe in ghosts and spirits as well. So and in first class because he travelled as a first class passenger he decided to talk about most stuff um, that he believed might have been true uh, because of mediumship and something to do with things that have played an important part in history but again these are just theories but uh, I won't go into too much more detail in this because I know the Vera wants to explain it for herself so I'm gonna let it continue saying it. Views. Hey, he's said to be the father of tabloid journalism so far out views were his mainstay. He was a brave man too, seeing that he helped women and children into lifeboats and gave his life jacket away. He was actually last seen with one of the guys we just mentioned, John Jacob Astor. Both of them were holding onto a raft, but their feet iced up and they went under. Prior to going on that trip, Steed had often talked about a mummy's curse. The curse goes back to some English dudes that bought the mummy case of the Princess of Amun-Ra, and after that, things didn't go too well for them. The case got back to England eventually, but there it sat ready to curse the country. To cut a long story short, everyone who bought it or went near it died, or so we're told. In 1912, a rich American was said to have bought the case and he didn't Yes, this is true about the mummy and the stories that um, go along with it. And again, these stories are based on myth, but how they were mentioned were exactly true. And the mummy that um, Stead mentioned and the stories that did come along with it never really moved to another place during 1912 and it is still located in the British Museum in London today and I don't know when it was actually put in the British Museum but it never left London during 1912 and it is still there for public view to this very day. Leave in all those silly superstitious tales he wanted to ship the thing over to the US, on board the Titanic. It's a fact that the tabloid creator Steed wrote about what later became known as the Unlucky Mummy, 
And so people put two and two together and got five, saying that because Steve died the mummy must have been on that ship. It wasn't. Still, one of the survivors on the Titanic had a story to tell. He was back on dry land. He described how Steed had been telling people on the ship how the mummy's curse was going to destroy London. This made headlines. The Washington Post ran one that went, Ghost of the Titanic, Vengeance of Hoodoo Mummy Followed the Man Who Wrote Its History. So much for the tabloids being the only ridiculous news sources. Let's get two things straight. No mummy case was on that ship. It's in the British Museum as you watch this. Steed was patently crazy, but we'll forgive him for giving away his life jacket. So if a mummy mad that her coffin had been plundered didn't do it, then who would make an obvious next choice to blame for the sinking of the Titanic? God. It was God that did it. But not the Catholic God, a Protestant God. You see, the construction number for the Titanic was 401, as you already know. But some people say it had another number on the hull that was 390904. What does that say? Okay, so this scary, scary theory, again, it's true. And this was believed by the Irish Catholics, and I have heard about this in plenty of documentaries, because this is a theory that some of the Catholic Irishmen believe in the shipyard, because when they spotted the number, when it was read upside down, apparently, it translated into the words, no Pope. And because the Titanic was considered being built by Protestant Catholics only, which is not true, but Protestant and Catholic Irishmen within the Holland and Wolf shipyard, there was a lot of tension going on. And for those men who were Catholic, they ended up getting bullied a lot because of their religion. And this was kind of like a scary thing for them. And even though I don't really think it's true, I, I could see why they were afraid. I can see why some people thought, oh, this ship is unlucky because it, it it's not holy because most of the builders that built the ship and the other ship, the Olympic, and possibly the Britannic, were built mostly by Protestant Irishmen. So I can definitely see why, but it's it's the worry of it all. That, that was just all what it is. It was just the worry and the fears all about it. What does that say if you look at it in a mirror? No Pope. The story goes that one day someone in the yard was straightening his tie in the mirror and he saw the number. My God, he thought it's a sign that that ship is doomed. The poor Catholics that built the ship in the Belfast shipyard were sure that it meant the Titanic was in for a rough ride. The truth is that the number never actually Okay, I've never heard of this before. I don't know if this is true, but this is the first time I've actually heard this actually appeared on the ship. Another fact is that the people who worked in the shipyard weren't Catholic but Protestant. It's also believed that the no pope rumor didn't start circulating until the 50s. So if it wasn't the fault of the Germans or JP Morgan or a mummy or God, then who could it have been? Well, we can blame the iceberg if we want to be very boring and factual. But we can also add something to the story. You might not know that one of the seamen that was supposed to sail on the Titanic was named David Blair, or Davy, to his friends. He was one of the guys that sailed on the ship when it was making its first trial runs. But just before it took that perilous journey over the ocean, he was assigned a different job. He was really bummed about it too, writing to his sister saying, This is a magnificent ship. I feel very disappointed I'm not to make her first voyage. Blair got off lucky. But did he do something naughty after getting the snub? It's a fact that when he left the ship he took some keys with him, keys that opened a locker to where a pair of binoculars were kept. This was the only locker up where the crow's nest was, and that's the place you really- Yes, this is true actually, because David Blair actually uh, got the keys um, when he left the ship. <laughs> I wouldn't say he was naughty because Blair didn't really do it on purpose because he didn't really plan it as like, oh, I'm angry, I'm going to steal the keys. No, that's not true. He actually forgot to give them back. And I heard this story and I need to check it again because I don't know if it's true or not. But when Blair actually did find the keys, he found them when he was on a honeymoon with his 
newly wedded wife I again I really don't know but this is just a story from what I heard and he also found them on the day that the Titanic hit the iceberg so whether it was just a conspiracy theory or if it was something that was mentioned I really don't know but this is what I've heard from this story again it might not be true but what is true though that Blair didn't really take the keys on purpose it was an accident place you really need binoculars when you're looking for things like I don't know icebergs Two of the lookouts actually survived, and when Congress asked them if binoculars would have helped them to better see that iceberg, both men said yes, most likely. Congress asked, how much sooner do you think you'd have seen it? To which one man replied, enough to get out of the way. So th Yes, this is true actually, because the two lookouts that did see the iceberg, Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, they did see the iceberg before the ship actually hit the iceberg, but even if they did have the binoculars, the binoculars may not have been helpful because how they spotted the iceberg from the crow's nest, it was a little bit too late because in the North Atlantic there was a water mirage effect and it made some things impossible to see until the last minute and then also it gives a reflection to some bits that were far away so it's not like the Arabian desert where you can actually see something and it's just something that um, the mind it's just something where the mind plays tricks on you I, I think with the water mirage effect I don't know but it would have been impossible to see things in time so even if they did have the binoculars I still think it would have not have been helpful and the, and the, even if um, the ship did hit the iceberg um, after going to hard to port I, I don't think it would have made a difference as much and I know I am being repetitive here because I am really confused and I really want to figure this out a bit more because it was mentioned a lot in On a Sea of Glass. I really don't know if there were some bits that did make a difference or not but this is just something that I really need to look into again before I can make my own opinion on this. Anyway here we go I think we're in the last few seconds of the video again yeah in the last few seconds so we'll probably get to the end most likely congress asked how much sooner do you think you'd have seen it to which one man replied enough to get out of the way so there you go human error was likely to blame we're sorry to disappoint you the theories are much more fun okay so now we've got to the end of the video what are my final thoughts on this i didn't really think it was that bad i mean <laughs> Sure, they did get some bits wrong, but that video wasn't as bad than I thought it was going to be. So, it's a bit 50 50. Uh, and there were some bits that they did add that were true, but there were some bits that I wasn't really too sure about either. So, I'm 50 50 on this one, and that's really interesting because it's just something that I really didn't expect. So I'm confused, <laughs> I really am confused, but yeah, th th there was just some bits that that were quite different or I didn't really expect, especially since the No Pope the theory came out in the 1950s. I never heard about this before and I don't know if it was actually researched or if it was if it was just made up I really don't know I really don't know on this one so I think what I'm going to do after this video is uploaded I might look into further research with this because it's given me a few ideas just to talk about all that sort of stuff really but yeah I, I definitely think it's really confusing but this information has like um, not taken away but I have actually learned a lot with a few things about it and that's given me a really good keen interest to research them a bit more and I think with this we're going to probably end this video right here and what do you guys think is there anything that I missed 
or is there anything that you agree with or disagree with or is there anything you want to add that was considered as a conspiracy theory but if it's and if it isn't true but let me know in the comments section down below and we'll definitely going to need to talk about this because I know there's going to be a lot of discussions so the more discussions we have the better and yeah the definitely we'll probably end this right here so thank you so much for watching and I know this video is going to be a longish one again but I hope Hopefully I would make more videos like this one and Sam thank you for inspiring me to actually make this video as well I wouldn't have done it without you or I wouldn't have actually made this channel if it wasn't for you either so yeah a really big massive thank you and until then I shall catch you very soon for the next video on the channel for next week so have a wonderful day everybody and take care of yourselves bye if you enjoyed this week's episode, please subscribe for more historical content. Until next time, this has been History Inside a Nutshell, Departing from the Docks. Thank you so much for all of your support and enjoy the rest of your voyage.